I think the attendees have started joining us. Attendees, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, taking us time from your busy schedule. Can I request my team to start playing the video? Yes, uh, you can go ahead. The last two decades, we experienced the rise of Chinese photovoltaic companies and the transformation of Longi from a pathfinder and an inventor of technology to an industry leader. Longi was established in 2000 and changed the game rules of the industry by promoting monocrystalline modules in 2015. In 2016, Longi's monoperk technology brought the industry into an era of high efficiency and low LID. In 2017, Longi's bifacial perk technology increases remarkable module power output with rare side irradiation. In 2019, M6 silicon wafers led the PV industry to an era of 450 watt ultra high power. With strong innovations, Longi has made numerous achievements like 24.06% efficiency of monocrystalline perk cell, the highest production of bifacial monocrystalline modules in the world, continuous technology advances and LCOE optimization. Now, Longi is about to set off another advancement in the industry once again. The latest Longi High Mo5 modules with optimized LCOE, especially designed for large scale PV stations, are now available. The power output of High Mo5 is up to 540 watts, with over 21% efficiency. The optimal size of the High Mo5 module, coupled with sophisticated construction, can reduce costs while increasing power generation. As seen in the PV station in Zhouchuan, China, HIMO5 can significantly lower labor, land, and BOS costs and reduce LCOE. Also, the application of HIMO5 in Quatar has proved to be a remarkable improvement in cost reduction. The advanced technology of the HIMO5 leads to optimal LCOE, which is the result Longi's exploration of every detail of functionality. New M10 gallium doped silicon wafer can reduce the linear power degradation to 0.45% per year. Compared with the traditional welding technology, Longi's smart soldering technology reduces the tensile strength of the cell by 20% by reducing the distance between cells by two thirds. This technology achieved a 0.3% improvement in module efficiency. HIMO5 follows a mature and reliable design path, framed, tempered glass on both sides to ensure the load capacity of the modules, with no crossbeam on the back to the module that blocks reflected light to ensure continuous and efficient power output. In practical applications, the size of HIMO5 is suitable for the main one-portrait and two-portrait horizontal single-axis tracking system. At the same time, it is perfectly compatible with the next-generation inverters. The working current, including 15% bifacial gain, is kept within 15 amps, without the loss of current generation. Standardization, perfect adaption, cost optimization and high efficiency leads to optimized LCOE that enables HIMO5 to be one of the most valuable products on the market. The high volume production of HIMO5 is ready. By first quarter of 2021, global supply is expected to reach 13.5 gigawatts. The new HIMO5 joins the Longi HIMO family.
bringing in a new PV era with ultra high value. Thank you for the video. Uh, welcome attendees. Uh, hello and good afternoon to all of you. This is Sangeeta here. Very good evening to attendees joining from India. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of Solar Carter and First View Group to a virtual event on the Digital Roundtable of CNI Project Leaders of Jordan, Lessons from the Top. This Digital Roundtable is organized to bring industry leaders and experts from solar rooftop sector to debate and highlight opportunities, pressing issues, and challenges. Today, we will discuss the changing policy, price, evolving module technologies, procurement, and project development dynamics in this sector. I would like to thank our exclusive partner, Longi Solar, for joining us today. Let's begin with our opening remarks by Sir Mohammed Altani, who is a Secretary General from Arab Renewable Energy Commission and Vice Chairman of Jordanian Renewable Energy Society. So we are really glad to have you with us. Uh, the screen is all yours. Uh, Mohammed Altani, sir, can you hear me out? Mohammed Altani, sir, can you please hear me out? Can you respond? Okay, I can't hear anything from Mohammed Altani, sir. Uh, so let's proceed ahead with our techno commercial presentation by Mr. Ahmed Al Kusha, who is a regional sales manager from Middle East in Launchi. We will come back to Mohammed Altani, sir, a little while later. Yes. Sorry, Cindy, yes. I've got bandwidth issues, so I'll have to go without the video. Yes, Ahmed, sir, the screen is all yours. Yes, okay. Thank you, Sangreta. And uh, as a first, uh, at first, I would like to thank Solar Quarter for arranging this webinar. Um, I believe that the video, the five minutes video, was. Uh, more than enough as a, as a self uh, explanation about Longi and about what we have done until now. I will have only a very short presentation uh, to show uh, what, what's new um, and to give a little bit more information about Longi to the people who don't know us uh, or maybe who would like to know more about what's what's new in, in Longi's portfolio. Uh, so uh, this is my short presentation, Longi. Uh, we have done uh, sales revenues of around more than $8 billion with a net profit of 1.3 billion. Uh, that last year, and currently we have more than 60,000 uh, global employees worldwide. And we spend on the research and development around $400 million, which means a very good portion of our net profit goes to always renew uh, research and development. We always invest in research and development, and that's what we can see by the end of this presentation what we have achieved until today. Uh, as you can see, Longi is mainly a wafer manufacturer. We have been established since year 2000 as a wafer manufacturer, monosilicon wafer manufacturer. We only were investing in monocrystalline. Last year, we have done um, more than 58 gigawatt wafer shipment while our wafer capacity um, has reached around 85 gigawatt, we are still number one in terms of market share in the wafer silicon market. 
Um, and for the module business, uh, we have been ranked uh, number one in 2020, as maybe um, it was shown in the video that Longi uh, entered the module business only in 2015. And in, in, in only five years, we have reached number one we, and we broke the record of 20 gigawatt. Nobody ever reached a 20 gigawatt module shipment in one year. And last year we have achieved 24.5 gigawatt, which is um, which was even higher by maybe 20 percent than uh, any one of among all the other competitors. Um, we um, have uh, more than 50 gigawatt right now of module capacity. We are expanding in the in the module capacities as we are also expanding our. A presence all over uh, the world. Our headquarters are in Qi'an in China, and our uh, overseas sales of head office is in Shanghai. Uh, we have offices in, in different regions. We have in Spain, and also we have in Dubai, a new office with, which was established only in uh, July last year. Uh, <clears throat> we have global uh, customers from all over the world with the biggest names and uh, uh, de from developers to EPCs. Uh, <clears throat> we have done excellent job with all uh, of all our partners, which we always mention as they are uh, the biggest part of our success. <clears throat> as you can see, one of the things that differentiate Longi than others is that we are financially healthy. We are ranking number one in terms of the Altman Z score by Bloomberg. Uh, we have we reach uh, five, while as you can see, most of our direct competitors is uh, much below ranked much below than us, and this means that we are the healthiest uh, PV manufacturer among all competitors. Uh, we absolutely number one in the tier one in terms of capacity. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, we are 100% bankable uh, PV module brand, as we can see um, after a few slides, and we are AAA uh, ranked by PV module tech. All this can be shown now. This is by Bloomberg. We are 100% uh, bankable by Bloomberg. Also, as you can see from PV module tech, we have been ranked the only manufacturer with AAA. Um, uh, ranking, which is related to bankability. Um, as mentioned, we have reached uh, in May um, an efficiency in the N-type Topcon solar cell of around 25.09. Uh, and we have, uh, we have been uh, working on this for a long time. And even a lot of people were asking, what is the future? What will be the next technology coming? So for us, for Longi, even in SNEC, in a few days ago, we have announced that the new technology that we are going to have by end of this year is the N-type module. And uh, we can speak briefly about, about this technology uh, maybe later. Um, we have been awarded um, uh, by a TUV for uh, for uh, as an energy yield uh, simulation winner uh, for several years. Um, also, we are the only uh, our ATC high achiever, um, as shown as shown below. In addition, we have been by the PVEL. We have been always a top runner uh, in the scorecard for uh, four times in a row until now. Um, in addition. Uh, we have been here, as you see, uh, um, energy yield test conducted by PV Magazine. Uh, we have been always number one uh, and a higher performance in energy yield. Uh, in addition, this also um, one of the uh, outdoor tests that has been done. Uh, you can see that uh, Along uh, other comp manufacturers, uh, we Longi has achieved 
the highest in bifacial uh, modules energy yield by reaching around 7.5% with the grass and uh, with white reflectivity, we reach around 11.5% additional yield increase. Um, mainly, um, this is uh, one of the, one of the um, a brief thing that I would love to add that the future of Longi, uh, we, we are looking the, for, the, for the whole planet that uh, by 2050, we will have a 100% renewable energy um, and, a carb and all the earth enters in a, a carbon negative mood. Also, we can see, you can see uh, briefly about what our expectations for 2030s. Solar becomes the main electricity source for electrical vehicles. Rene renewable energy uh, accelerates the replacement of fossil energy, absolutely. Desalination as well, and solar plus hydro hydrogen energy. Those are all the future uh, for the, the renewable energy uh, in, in general. Now, I just want to I, I, did, I did not add any slides to the end type because it's really a still a newly launched model. And still we are, um, um, we are preparing a, a very big uh, celebration to introduce the end type. And absolutely we will, we will send you uh, all, um, all the updates about the HIMO N. As you already may know, our products, it's usually HIMO 4 for the M6 cells modules, HIMO 10 for the uh, 10, uh, HIMO 5, sorry, for the 10 M, M, uh, M10 cells modules. And now we have the HIMO N and it stands for the N-type modules. Just to give you some, uh, let's say sneak peeks about the, the, the module, it will reach around 570 watt based on the same standard 72 cells for the M10 uh, cell uh, dimension. The efficiency will reach around 22.3, module efficiency. Uh, it will be available uh, by end of this year. Uh, there are a lot of improvements on the light induced degradation for the first year about uh, about the efficiency during uh, the degradation uh, every year. All these factors will be improved. Um, we will, uh, I can tell you that we will reach around 88% after 30 years um, energy yield. This is one of the improvements and absolutely we will discuss more and speak more and specific about the end type uh, once we have um, celebration for launching this model. Thank you so much. And um, this is my brief, uh, short presentation. Thank you so much, sir, for the valuable insights. Attendees, uh, please make a note. You can start posting your questions in the Q&A box. We will take up the questions right after the panel discussion. Uh, with this, uh, let's proceed ahead with our valuable remarks from Sir Mohammed Altani, who is there with us who is the Secretary General from Arab Renewable Energy Commission and Vice Chairman of Jordanian Renewable Energy Society. Sir, we are really pleased to have you. The screen is all yours. Congress. Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank, uh, the, uh, thank you for organizing this uh, important uh, di digital round table for leader to talk about solar uh, uh, rooftop in Jordan. Uh, is it okay? So we can hear you. Yes, good, because at the same time, my laptop just now open. Uh, just I want to, uh, to put uh, some uh, remarks. Uh, I try my best uh, yesterday, I give you two names, official names, to join this important meeting about a uh, photovoltaic roof top in Jordan, but it's uh, short notice, as your colleague said. Uh, I want to mention about Jordan. Jordan was the first country in the region issue the energy and if energy efficiency law in uh, 2012. Uh, for projects of energy and photovoltaic large and small projects started in 2014. 
the uh, the regulatory of energy and mineral resources uh, already put instructions and the classification for the company in 2017. And uh, there are being reviewed this year, uh, this instruction. Uh, we, by, by, uh, uh, by different sectors with the energy community, uh, co uh, community in the Parliament. Uh, the state, the state, of uh, uh, being a small and medium, we have in, in cooperation with all related institutions to review the regulation for workers and the classification for the company. Uh, we are working to, to push more for more, uh, more rules for small and uh, medium enterprise to participate and uh, to uh, uh, for a new job uh, uh, for a new job career for a new graduate from universities and that's why we should uh, work more to classify that many small or me medium enterprise work uh, together instead of focusing in, uh, just on the large large company or the people who have money too, too much money and this is we should uh, work together to, to facilitate, and we push through uh, different government body and uh, through uh, my my organization uh, to manage this. Uh, we are we are we this despite of uh, uh, many many uh, uh, sexist story uh, in my country because uh, last year. Uh, was the year of uh, of uh, a new economic crisis due to corona and we we have increased the demand of inhabitants are want to 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 uh, to have a photovoltaic rooftop and this is more than 12000 12000 uh, rooftop uh, in the year 2020 20, 20, and looking for more and electric distribution companies has created online electric forms to make it easier for citizens to install and speed up the, pro the procedure and fast the response to them. Uh, despite that, we mentioned the sector is still suffering from needs for maintenance and operation. That's mean uh, many complaints come from uh, the end user uh, after they, they install the system we need uh, maintenance and operation companies, uh, uh, especially, uh, especially uh, for washing and maintenance due to dust and dirt. And this is uh, maintenance should be every two weeks at, at least. There is still many citizens refusing to install the system due to the lack of good appearance on the, on the roof which required integrated system with the roofs. And this is, we look for building integrated BV. And this is important because not all people, uh, it's not anyway, uh, not satisfied by people and it's not uh, look, look nice. And we encourage uh, uh, investors and the private sector to take care about this, uh, uh, this kind of, of uh, clients and to take care because we failure to install system correctly, which make them uh, uh, broken or damaged because it's not uh, fixed very well in, in, the, in the rooftop. Uh, still, we have variation in the prices and some company is still uh, but uh, low price. Uh, and this is uh, depend on the quality of the and the performance for the other company. And it's a margin between 4,000 uh, GDs, uh, sorry, four, 400 GDs uh, and uh, 700 uh, GDs per kilowatt, uh, per kilowatt uh, photovoltaic, peak photovoltaic. That's mean uh, uh, inhabitants uh, in general need about four, four, four kilo. That's mean uh, around 3,000. This is uh, the top quality and uh, less, uh, about uh, 100, uh, 1,600 
uh, the, the minimum. Uh, also, Eric uh, already uh, in negotiation, and we already uh, mentioned to the cabinet in uh, our government uh, regarding the net metering system. It must be reviewed and switched to feed in tariff uh, in order to service the, the citizen, and it should be bankable for the citizen uh, in my country. And also, the obligation of a large consumer to be a part of their electricity bill so they can review energy system uh, will not be a, a burden on the energy bill uh, in Jordan. Uh, I think we have in Jordan a good experience as we are the first country in the other, in Arab country and in the region working in, in, uh, in renewable energy in general. And uh, we have a good experience in, in, in photovoltaic. Uh, we need much more uh, 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 preparation, and I think within uh, one, two years, we can uh, penetrate uh, because we have a skilled people in my country. Uh, uh, I think uh, two days ago, we have the Arab uh, Renewable Energy Dialogue from more than 19 Arab countries, and we, it's look like Jordan pioneer in, 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 uh, in photovoltaic, and we can reach this with the skilled people we, we have here in Jordan. Uh, uh, I see uh, uh, the company Longi, one of uh, well known in, in, in my country, and uh, people should, should learn more about the quality of, 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 the, of the modules, because uh, also there is a certain uh, the material which used in, 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 in the system of rooftop, it should be a study, a study very, very carefully. Uh, otherwise, this will be a problem, will be a problem because it also this is, uh, uh, will decrease the price, but this is will uh, uh, also with low, low, uh, low quantity. I think Jordan is a key uh, for photovoltaic uh, in the region because of we uh, uh, thinking about uh, a grid uh, and the green corridor and uh, to, to, to have uh, uh, connected to the other country, Jordan like Switzerland to the, to, to the Europe. And we can uh, also through Jordan uh, make a connection uh, to Egypt, make a connection to King Saudi Arabia, make a connection to Syria, from Syria to Lebanon. And this is also uh, 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 very good, and we uh, we are like a focal point. Um, uh, this is what I have in mind regarding uh, re regarding uh, the photovoltaic, and especially, uh, especially for uh, photovoltaic uh, rooftop. We should, uh, uh, as the, uh, as the, the the slogan of uh, the the fifth revolution, industrial revolution. We should uh, shift it from profit to benefit because now many, many clients want to see and to, to have photovoltaic and the roof, not, not just for, for, for electric city, for uh, uh, house, for the house, for electric uh, appliances, home appliances, uh, but also for uh, electric vehicles. And we have uh, uh, excellent story, uh, uh, excellent case study here in Jordan. And I think more than 500 uh, families or uh, householders already have a dual system for uh, photovoltaic for electricity on a grid. And also at the same time, uh, they have this uh, photovoltaic rooftop for el electric car. And uh, we uh, and the, the regulation here in Jordan, we try uh, for the, the 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 concept of sustainable uh, inhabitants, and this is will uh, encourage the Jordanian people uh, to focus more on, on uh, renewable energy, especially photovoltaic and uh, solar heating, because this is will reduce the electricity bill and. I think within the coming two years, uh, the number will exceed more than uh, 100, 100 
50,000 uh, householder to 2,000 uh, householder. Uh, this is what I have in my hand. I want to thank uh, everyone in this uh, uh, excellent uh, panelist. All uh, I know, person, some of them personal wise, they uh, are high qualified and uh, a, a good uh, accumulative experience in the field. Uh, Jordan is uh, 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 a good uh, case for other Arab country, and I hope a success uh, uh, round table about uh, the roof uh, top in, uh, in Jordan. Uh, and allow me to continue for 20 minutes with you to, to listen to your uh, session again. Thank you so much, sir, for the insightful remarks. We are really glad to have you with us. With this, thank you, thank you sir. With this, thank you. Bye bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with this, we will proceed ahead with a brief presentation by Mr. Farah A. Kwaish, who is the Deputy General <laughs> Manager from Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Department from Isaac Marzi Group. Sir, the screen is all yours. Yeah, thank you, Sangeeta. Uh, uh, let me, I, I want just to check the screen is shown. My it's visible. Shown. It's visible. Yeah, right. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, so good day, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to uh, thank the organizers of this panel discussion. First few uh, media ventures for inviting myself to speak about some of the most important topics in the renewable energy field in Jordan. Uh, I chose this topic to uh, because it's uh, one of the most important topics to, to be uh, discussed at the meantime, because uh, we evolved uh, since 2012 until this moment. Uh, Jordan was one of the first countries to start the regulations and the implementation of renewable energy uh, uh, for uh, the private sector and also for the uh, country-wise uh, sector. Uh, thank you for uh, introducing uh, myself. Uh, just uh, want to go quick about this uh, presentation. As we all know, Jordan is a non-oil producer country. We have uh, very limited resources of natural gas. Uh, before 2012, we used to import most of our uh, energy. Uh, as many of the Jordanian participants here in this panel can uh, remember, between 2010 and 2012, we were heavily dependent on the uh, imported Egyptian uh, natural gas. However, the supply was not stable because of some uh, terroristic activities in northern uh, Egypt. Uh, since then, our government decided to increase the energy security in the country and made some advancement in uh, that regard. Uh, nowadays, Jordan was able to reach almost 20% of its electric, uh, electricity needs from renewable uh, sources, mainly solar photovoltaics and wind power plants. Uh, briefly again about the solar PV history, and as my colleague Ahmed mentioned in his valuable uh, presentation, as the solar PV is the main uh, contributor to our grid currently, it's worth mentioning that this technology was commercially found in Bell Labs in 1954, and since then evolved to reach a very attractive levels and efficiencies in our current days. Uh, this graph shows the, also the prices of this technology and the huge drop since 1977 until 2015, and it is still dropping. If we, if we take a look uh, at the current market prices, it's uh, also below 30 cents per watt peak, while it was around $76 per watt peak back in 1977. Uh, also, the uh, efficiency of the PV systems, and specifically for the PV cells and the PV modules, uh, evolved. Uh, as you uh, may hear uh, the uh, presentation of uh, my colleague Ahmed, the, the, the efficiencies was around uh, maybe 10% to 15% 10 years ago. Now we are talking about over 20% efficiencies of the module, of, of course. The uh, second uh, part or contributor to the renewable energy in Jordan is the wind. Uh, energy. It's worth mentioning that uh, it is uh, coming in the second place 
and the windmills, as we all know, uh, was uh, uh, working since the 12th uh, century. Also, uh, likewise, the solar photovoltaics, the efficiency of the wind generators also increased and the prices uh, dropped as a result of the economies of uh, scale. As we can see in this chart, the electricity production prices from wind uh, generators decreased and the total installed capacity worldwide increased to more than 650 gigawatts as of uh, 2019. Uh, now, talking about the challenges uh, that Jordan was facing before 2012, the dependency of imported energy by more than 96%, no availability of local trusted energy resources, the high cost of imported energy, and the high growth of primary energy demand in Jordan. Uh, therefore, and in order to solve these challenges, the government made many modifications. The first one was to increase the prices of electric tariff back in 2012, and they had a plan to increase gradually uh, the electricity tariff. Uh, I apologize because this uh, slide uh, is taken from the uh, legal uh, or the official websites. It's in Arabic, but it's, uh, it's talking about the uh, increase in the electricity uh, tariffs in Jordan from 2013 until 2017. Considering the fact that Jordan gets a very good value of solar radiation, the government was working on issuing a, a dedicated law to ease the use of renewable energy. Also in 2011, the government was targeting renewable energy developers to build renewable energy plants and to sell directly to the uh, government to sell the electricity, of course. The first round of the direct proposal was initiated in 2011. However, the installation of the projects only took place after 2014. Uh, finally, in 2012, the Renewable Energy Law Number 13 was issued, and that law gave the option to the electricity consumers uh, uh, to install renewable energy systems to cover their uh, consumption. Also in 2012, the renewable energy bylaws were released to clarify and organize the net metering scheme, which allows the consumer to install a renewable energy system to cover their consumption at the point of use. And in 2014, the wheeling regulations were released to allow the consumers to uh, build their projects in a different locations and to make use of the produced energy to cover virtually their uh, invoices. And now looking at the uh, current renewable energy uh, status in Jordan, this slide is also in Arabic as I got it from the uh, legal uh, and official uh, websites. Uh, we can see that uh, almost 65% of the installed capacity uh, built through the power purchase rounds or power purchase agreements, PPAs, and it is supplying electricity directly to the national grid. While uh, we can uh, uh, see that uh, maybe 35% uh, the remaining is dedicated to the net metering and to the uh, energy wheeling uh, schemes. Uh, the current challenges after uh, evolving the uh, uh, energy laws and the uh, bylaws. Now, uh, at our uh, days, we uh, have some challenges that is facing the energy uh, portfolio in Jordan. Uh, both solar PV and wind energy uh, resources are intermittent. We can't uh, heavily depend on uh, those energies because it is intermittent. Uh, the PPA projects are concentrated in a low usage areas, such as the southern uh, area of uh, Jordan. Uh, the transmission infrastructure cost is uh, really high, and it's not the right time for the government to invest more in the transmission infrastructure. Uh, the growth in energy demand did not meet the expectations. It is much lower, and the overcapacity and long-term commitments between the government and the electricity producers uh, in Jordan. Also, we have additional production capacities that exceeds the uh, total demand. Uh, 
I, I will not go uh, to the technical uh, outcome, but those graphs shows the uh, uh, the uh, interference between the RE projects, the renewable energy projects, and the uh, load, the base load. Uh, just trying to to make it uh, very uh, okay. One of the uh, suggested solutions uh, that I have in mind is the partial uh, storage. Uh, using a hybrid system of wind and solar uh, PV, which is already the case in Jordan, can cover some partial base load. However, by adding some storage capacities, the excess energy produced in the non-peak demand areas can be stored in batteries and released back to the grid at peak demand areas. So this is one of the solutions uh, that could be used by the government to uh, try to increase the uh, capacities of the renewable energies uh, instead of decreasing and preventing more consumers to build more PV projects or renewable energy uh, projects in Jordan. Another solution uh, is to convert any future renewable energy uh, utility scale projects to be either concentrating solar power system with large uh, thermal storage uh, period or to set criteria to the renewable energy developers to combine some storage systems to their future uh, plans. Also, another suggested uh, solution is to limit the utility scale renewable energy uh, projects and to enhance the distributed generation projects. And this way, the transmission lines losses will be avoided and the control of the smaller power plants will be much easier. And to be more specific, any new project that is larger than 20 megawatt peak must be reconsidered uh, to either changing the technology into more uh, beneficial and stable one, or to set conditions of adding storage, as I mentioned uh, before. Also, one, uh, one more suggested solution is to uh, subsidize the low tariff buyers uh, in order to enhance them having renewable energy systems to cover their consumption. For example, our uh, government already released an incentive program to residential small-scale consumers by rebearing them after installing a small-scale system. Uh, this incentive led to a booming in the small-scale projects uh, during the uh, few past months. Uh, my last suggestion is uh, to limit the power purchase agreements uh, to its original length of 20 years, which already started in 2014 and 15, and not to extend any uh, further agreements in that regard. Uh, sorry for uh, taking uh, longer, and uh, I would like to thank you again for having me and will be here to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the valuable insights. Uh, yes, we will take up the questions, but after the panel discussion. So now it's time to start our most awaited roundtable discussion of rooftop solar leaders of Jordan. Session experts who have joined us today are Mr. Kareem McCarby, who is an executive director from EPDA. He would be moderating today's session. Engineer Mohammed Albani, who is the secretary general from Arab Renewable Energy Commission and Vice Chairman of Jordanian Renewable Energy Society, Dr. Firas Balisme, who is the CEO from SB Group, Mr. Faria Kwaish, who is the Deputy General Manager of Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Department from Izzet Mersey Group, and Mr. Ahmed al Kusha, who is the Regional Sales Manager of Middle East from Longi. I would like to hand over the session to Kareem Sir to take the discussions forward with other speakers. Thank you very much. Karim sir, the screen is all yours. You have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon to everyone, wherever you are in the world. And um, just um, maybe what, what we can do is um, I'll ask uh, uh, each of you to for a short introduction, right? And then uh, just, uh, you know, just uh, you know, introduce yourself, and then uh, I'll ask a few questions, and then we can interact during during the, the, the panel. Okay, so I'll well, just you know brief introduction about myself. I'm Karim Megherbi. I'm based uh, in in Dubai, the UAE. 
Um, and I founded a company called EPDA doing especially origination for large scale projects in wind and solar, mostly in Asia, Central Asia, uh, a little bit Africa and a bit of Europe. And I work with selected investors. So basically what, what I do is uh, identify projects, doing pre-due diligence, pre-negotiation and bring transactions for um, you know, few, few, few investors for uh, the acquisition. It could be greenfield or um, uh, in construction or in operation. So in the MENA region, I'm not quite active because you know it's like about tenders, except maybe Jordan, which is a very interesting market. And we'll basically talk about it today. So that, that's great. So that's for my introduction. Um, so let me just make a brief background, perhaps. Um, so we had a session about Jordan a few months ago, I believe. Uh, not everyone was there actually at that time. And we discussed about uh, you see the renewable energy uh, development in the country, especially in the context of uh, COVID. Actually, Jordan was, uh, you know, somehow the demand was very low at that time. And I think uh, uh, Farah mentioned that, that, uh, uh, you know, just, uh, the, the, the demand is lower than expected. And intermittency was, 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 was a big issue. And, uh, and there was some, you know, basically... Uh, even discussions regarding existing PPA and so on. So, so there was quite a, you know, uh, a difficult time, but at, at the same time, Jordan was keen on uh, uh, decreasing his uh, emissions and bringing more renewable energy in the energy mix. And I remember a presentation where basically by 2050, but uh, please, uh, you will correct me because it's really, uh, uh, I didn't take note at that time, but I remember that it was like something like 50% or even less actually. And most of the energy mix at that time would be based on gas, right? Replacing, replacing oil. And honestly, we were all upset <laughs> because that's not, uh, that's not enough. <laughs> so so uh, it would be interesting to, to see in the context of, you see the recent publication of the International Energy Agency, where basically we have to stop, right? The exploration uh, in the oil and gas sector. And you know that uh, Saudi Arabia recently said that basically this report is uh, straight from La La Land, right? So <laughs> we, have to, we have to think about uh, where, where we go at that time and especially in the MENA region. And Jordan is well positioned. Um, I mean, Jordan has a, a great implementation, uh, uh, has made a lot of progress in the renewable energy. Projects were implemented finance, with international uh, banks, with great sponsors, you have wind, you have solar. I mean, there's no, there's no reason why Jordan would not be as uh, Saudi or U the uh, UAE, et cetera, with a very, very strong star target and, and where it, it, should be, it should be okay also to, to move with uh, strongly in renewable energy. So maybe we can discuss that. Okay, and um, and also talking about the opportunities in the in the in the roof uh, top uh, uh, system where basically it's uh, it's the decent most de decentralized option, but at the same time we do have an energy mix where you know fossil fuel should almost disappear. So we, we have to think about that at the same time. So let me, you know, I, I just introduce you. I mean, I just ask you in the in the order I see you on the on my screen. Uh, but Farah, already you introduced yourself and you made a quite a, a, a very good introduction, I have to say. I have plenty of questions for you. <laughs> yes, but, I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so maybe I'll come back to you after. Uh, Ahmad? Um... Hello. Hi. Hi, Karim. How are you? We have met last week and we, yeah. uh, we are meeting <laughs> this week too. It's always good to see you. Uh, my name is Ahmed, I'm a regional sales manager for Longi Solar in the Middle East. I'm, I'm located in Jordan, and this is my hometown, so I'm, I'm also excited about uh, all the information that everyone is giving today. So that's a brief introduction about myself. Thank you. Okay. Uh, maybe just a few words about uh, Longi in Jordan. Have you, uh, do you have already active projects or are you looking at uh, some projects right uh, currently? Yes, we have uh, worked on, um, honestly, we worked with our uh, partners uh, 
such as the, the, the panelists, uh, they are joining us today. We work with EPCs and developers and uh, distributors in the Jordanian market. We have done um, good until now. I can say that uh, until um, in the last um, year, um, from the second half of last year until the second half of, uh, of this year, of the, the first half of this year, we have shipped around uh, maybe 40 to 50 uh, megawatt uh, until, until now to the Jordanian market. It's several to projects or to, uh, to smaller projects or big projects. Usually, maybe uh, I'm not know, I don't know if you are aware, Karim, that currently there are regulations in Jordan that uh, prevent anyone from installing projects with higher than one megawatt. Yeah. So um, we are talking about accumulated projects from here and there. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, so Dr. Firas, maybe a short introduction and, you know, some comments about your activities in Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Karim. Yeah, pleasure meeting you again. Uh, uh, my name is Firas Balasme. I am the CEO of uh, FP Group. Uh, we are in the market since 11 years and in renewable energy since 2014. Uh, my vision for the market, we have big, I think, uh, problems, big issues, is the current uh, contracts with the conventional power stations. It's a big issue in Jordan. And the second one is the infrastructure, or we can say two challenges. The current contracts with the power stations, conventional power stations, and the infrastructure. And this is will be the main problem for the future of the renewable energy in Jordan. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Fia. So uh, next one is Pri, uh, Priyanshi. You have uh, uh, Ajaz, are you are you here? Uh, sir, uh, they, those are my colleagues. Uh, we have Mohammed Altani, sir. Ah, uh, Mohammed. But I saw he, I saw you, and now you disappeared. Yeah, I suppose he is uh, having some issue with the connectivity again. Uh, so he's connecting to his audio. I can see that. Yes, I think he's there with us. Uh, Mohammed Altani, sir, I suppose you have connectivity with your audio. We are not able to hear you. Okay, you hear it? Yes. Okay, Mohammed. Yeah. So uh, nice to meet you again. Uh, unfortunately, last time there was uh, some connection, so don't disappear this time. Um, and uh, we saw you on TV recently giving a good interview uh, about uh, youth uh, in in the Arab world and the uh, growing. Uh, needs uh, in the green economy. So it was a great, uh, great talk. So very happy to, to have you here. Uh, maybe again, a short introduction about yourself and about, you know, the, the what you what you're doing and the league and so on. Yes, uh, my, uh, my name is Hamad Ta'ani. I am uh, the Secretary General of the Arab Renewable Energy Commission and the chairman of the Jordanian Renewable Energy Association. Uh, I listened carefully to my colleague uh, from Jordan regarding uh, the, the excellent situation of renewable energy in Jordan, uh, specifically uh, photovoltaic. Uh, I think two days ago, uh, the Minister of Energy, uh, Her Excellency uh, uh, Engineer Hala Zawati mentioned we passed we reach more than 20 percent from renewables. And you know, this is a good target for a, a country like Jordan, uh, because uh, still uh, renewable energy worldwide, it's a uh, big load, not basic load. And I think we, we push for this limitation just for one mega uh, project nowadays. And I push personal wise five years ago to do that because uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, challenges through the first uh, round and the second round because first round was very expensive and the second round 
it's uh, comparing with the first round, it's it's okay. But come to country like King Saudi Arabia and uh, like United Arab Emirates, they achieve uh, big projects with the low cost for producing electricity from uh, water voltage. And let's uh, be educated from our bad mistakes. This is essential to do because while uh, we, I believe in uh, 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 private uh, public uh, corporation, uh, this bush also to take care about uh, uh, inhabitants in my country should uh, have something regarding to see the, the, the benefit of uh, photovoltaic system. I think within maybe two, three months, they are reviewing the electricity uh, tariff, and maybe this is, will be reduced for uh, certain uh, uh, capacity for inhabitants, and maybe this encourage much more people to, to have uh, renewable energy. I advise the public sector in my country to find uh, a good opportunities in many Arab countries surrounding from Africa, and from uh, Iraq or Syria or uh, uh, African country because they are in need for investment or renewable energy. Uh, electricity market in Jordan, very narrow. It's not just 0.2% from, uh, from the total electricity in the Arab world. And why, why we have uh, a good skilled people and the classified company and when known and they have a good relation, uh, friendship with the uh, outside of my country and uh, they have this kind of knowledge and uh, already have the technology transfer, they can get a benefit from that for a good investment in uh, other Arab country. But the situation is Jordan, uh, excellent uh, so far. And that's why we are reviewing for a new uh, tariff and uh, to, to leave uh, net metering and to have a good uh, prices for electricity. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, Mohammed. Um, so, well, let's, let's, let's have a discussion right, about, uh, about the Jordan market. And um, so, Mr. Farah, so I, I, I saw your presentation, which was very interesting, very much detailed. I mean, it's lots of uh, food for, for thoughts, clearly. Um, but, and I, I'm hearing this, this limitation of one megawatt and the fact that now the, the market will start, will, will start, will restart somehow. So I'm not an expert in, in the Jordan market, so I apologize if my question may be a bit naive, right? But at the same time, I see that the, the you see, you, you, your grid is flexible because you have oil, you have gas, and you import them, actually. So you're very much dependent on oil and gas. And at the same time, as you can see from the UAE, from Saudi, uh, you can definitely structure uh, transactions in a way where you really reach lower tariff. And what you have in Saudi or in the UAE is that you reach the price which is below the marginal price of natural gas. And therefore, every day that you burn gas or oil, it's like you burn your, your bank notes, right? <laughs> it's the same. And, and, and so I'm, I'm hearing that now we want to constrain to one megawatt and they are constrained on the, on the, on the grid, which, which I hear. And, and that's why I believe there was this transmission line between, you know, this uh, uh, Saudi and, and so on. So, so that's, that's why, you know, you need to have a more regional market. But at the same time, I'm surprised that uh, Jordan would not capitalize on his, its great experience where you, or you have all the players and so on to basically bring more renewable at a lower price in the grid because there's, I don't see anything which is more difficult than in other countries where you reach penetration rate higher than that. So if you can comment on that. Yes, of course. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, now uh, nowadays the uh, peak load in Jordan does not exceed 3.4 gigawatts, the peak load. However, the production capacity that we have in Jordan mixed between traditional and renewable energy uh, systems is five 
0.4 gigawatt, which means that we almost have double the capacity to produce the uh, required uh, uh, energy. So nowadays we have the the uh, national energy uh, production company uh, we called NIPCO is 100% uh, national company. Uh, the uh, main purpose and role of this company is to purchase uh, electricity and to transmit and then to sell to uh, electric distributors. The, uh, the problem is that the uh, very long period contracts between NIPCO and the electricity producers, such either uh, if they are traditional or renewable, the, the tariff, the agreed upon tariff is relatively high. Uh, we, it might be a problem that we uh, started earlier in uh, uh, exploiting the renewable energy resources, but in 2014, the government through NIPCO uh, signed deals with uh, some developers to purchase the uh, electricity and the price at that time, which is, I believe, still valid until now, was ranging between uh, 12 18 cents per kilowatt hour. Nowadays, we are hearing about one point something per kilowatt hour. However, I think our government uh, made uh, maybe uh, uh, an earlier uh, decisions and we are now forcing or facing the uh, bad consequence of uh, these decisions. Uh, also, uh, NEPCO uh, has uh, contracts with other uh, electricity producers such as the uh, traditional energy working on natural gas or in, uh, on oil. And uh, as you may know, Jordan is one of the richest country with shale oil. We have a dedicated company which came from Estonia to uh, exploit and burn uh, shale oil in order to produce electricity. Nowadays, the contract between the shale oil company and the government was suspended. And now we are uh, at the court laws. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, maybe mistakes or cumulative mistakes that our uh, energy uh, people and our government made since 2012 until this moment. Uh, they, they, uh, they made maybe uh, earlier decisions, but nobody knew that the uh, photovoltaic prices will reach uh, this point. So this is my brief comment about that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, this is a very, very fair point. And, and uh, so, Dr. Dr. Firas, what, what do you think then uh, in this context? So, so, should we? So, first of all, in this context, you you do have this rooftop and this one megawatt cap, which is there. So everybody will will rush uh, in this direction, and uh, and that's that's your feeling. First of all, this this segment at least will grow in Jordan or also we don't really know or is it is it good uh, that uh, there are good perspective? Uh, no, the small size projects and especially the rooftop, the residential projects is growing, growing up with full support from the government side through the GRIF, the, the, the fund, the special fund from the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources and even the private sector. I see that the future of this sector is growing and growing very well. Uh, but it's we, we are talking about the, the big size of projects above one mega. This I think this sector will be will be killed totally. Uh, well, we don't know. Let's, Let's see. <laughs> yeah. but, but okay. But but for this for this uh, the, the small projects you have. Do you have uh, only because rooftop one megawatt? Maybe it's not uh, everywhere, or is it also on the ground and direct PPA with, for example, industries? Or also this is for residential? Can you tell us more, little bit about this uh, this market and also the the price? Also, if we can compare the price of you know having this electricity from the grid or getting it from the from the rooftop, is it competitive or do we need still the subsidy? Uh, uh, in Jordan, for the rooftop, for the residential, or for even uh, the other sectors, it's uh, very, uh, very attractive because the payback period is maximum three years, maximum. So it is a very attractive, and that's why I see the future. It's it will it will be grow up 
uh, up to the maximum because if the payback period is very long. And so, the payback yes. is, is made based on the special tariff supported by the government? Yes, or yes, the yes tariff... absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. There is because... still a, they still need a subsidy from the government or do we have a market price? <laughs> no, the, the special tariff supported by the government is up to the 300 kilowatt hour only. So above that, you will pay much more up. You, you, you will reach up to uh, uh, point, uh, point two six to, to point two five six uh, cents per kilowatt hour. It's a very high, and that's for residential and commercial, and even for uh, educational institutes. So it is a very high tariff, and that's why the maximum payback period is up to three years maximum for the residential. For the big size, for the educational and commercial institutes, the payback period is about two years, 2.5 years maximum. So mm -hmm. it is very attractive and it will grow for sure. But as you said, the rooftop is a very small. Not everyone has uh, enough space for a big size. And right now it's not allowed above one mega. It should be less than one mega. So residential, small size, commercial, it will be always, all the time, any time, it will be attractive and they, they will install it. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, Ahmad, so you said that basically you shipped uh, 40 megawatt recently. So, so I guess this is in this context, right? The rooftop and with a cap of one megawatt or was it? Yeah, so if it is in this context, can you tell us more how you see this market? Um, is it like, I mean, it seems to be very attractive, but as usual, when it's, it's very attractive, we could expect also some, you know, evolution in the regulation in terms of price and so on. So how do you see that? Would, you, would we be, would the, the, I would say the industry in Jordan be able to absorb any kind of regulatory change or is, is it uh, the regulatory here is for two years, three years, five years, it's stable. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, that's exactly what we always discuss even with our partners in the Jordanian market. That uh, one of the main concerns that we always look at is what if the regulations uh, change in a in, like overnight, or what happens if anything like new regulation happens? And uh, like even we, um, we uh, as as uh, our partners couldn't um, uh, like secure this material that they have already uh, got in, in in this in this region or in Jordan itself. So this is always a headache for us and for our partners. Uh, for um, and that's why we always have challenges that uh, regulations might change, and uh, this will absolutely affect the whole market. And even that always makes uh, decisions related to uh, expansion or even of um, uh, like keeping stocks in the region will always uh, be um, have a higher risk because we don't know if the regulations will, will stay or it will change. So this is always the case. But as, as you said, that we see that it's a potential market and the market is still uh, moving on, even uh, with um, all the pandemic that we have been gone through through the, 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 last, uh, uh, the last year, we still see that uh, things are moving forward. And we hope the best for the market. Okay, thanks. And so, so Mohammed, is, is it you, you you're saying that the the market is is good in Jordan, and and it seems to be indeed the, there are some segments which are good, but at the same time, these big uh, power plants, uh, you know, this sector seems to to struggle. But uh, and, and when I see that, uh, I would imagine that you know, the target is basically to move away somehow from 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 this. You know, so you do. You have the issue of the of the of the emissions okay that's one but you also have the issue of the the, the i would say the economy itself because now you, you you could see in europe there is carbon tax borders that will be implemented and so on so i guess in the MENA region you know it's it's kind of you know moving how are we going to manage that if our economy is based on fossil fuels and so on so i'm just you know wondering how how you how you see that um, first of all, on the rooftop, 
Do you believe that the regulatory framework will stay for how long? And uh, are we confident that it will be stay here? And do you see regarding the big power plants, is it dead also? Or <laughs> you think it will be resumed at a point in time? Yes, I see Jordan is in the right track. In the accumulative plan through uh, Jordan government, we reach around one giga uh, from, from renewables maximum uh, one, one year from now. And I don't see any country nearby can exceed what Jordan exceed according to the energy demand we have. Uh, I listen carefully to my colleague from Jordan uh, regarding uh, uh, as uh, two of them uh, mentioned uh, regarding in inhabitants and the incentives given by the government, it's a, it is a, excellent. And uh, I think many people, uh, maybe within one year from now, more than two, 200,000 uh, householder will have a photovoltaic system in their uh, top roof. Everywhere here in Jordan, uh, in schools, in church, in mosque, in uh, uh, remote uh, villages, everywhere you can, you are like in, in Europe, which your own country, in Jordan regarding uh, two proof uh, for photovoltaic. And also one of the main advantage, it's started per one uh, kilowatt peak uh, system, now reduced just for 500 per kilowatt. And this is also a extra advantage to encourage people uh, to, to, to adopt or, or to have uh, their own uh, rooftop uh, system. Uh, regarding, regarding, and that's uh, also a challenge for uh, Jordan uh, because after COVID-19, we, we still suffering economy-wise, social-wise, everything uh, now, a global wise uh, issue, and this is a new economic crisis. The, the energy demand is reduced uh, global wise, less than the half. That's mean in some reports, maybe like we are in year uh, 1930. And this is cannot push the government to, to, put, uh, to encourage uh, renewables because in Jordan, in my country, we already exceed. Also, Jordan, one of the countries, most uh, all Arab countries are uh, uh, signature on, on the, the Paris Agreement for the climate change and environment uh, impact from his uh, from his uh, his Majesty King Abdullah the Second and all the decision maker in my country going fast regarding the environment and this is why Jordan is. Uh, the best case scenario uh, and the best case study for all Arab country. As also my colleague uh, mentioned, it's, uh, I think it's not just uh, 12, uh, 12 cent, maybe 15 or 16, 16 or more cent, uh, dollar cent was the first round. And that's why, because we, we didn't at that time take in, 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 in mind the cost effectiveness and this is the bad mistake have been taken because we 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 shouldn't go to the fixed price for bigger projects and that's keep Jordan suffering and nowadays Jordan think about the green hydrogen and uh, as I see one uh, colleague uh, uh, slides we uh, the best solution uh, batteries and the fuel cells we can uh, Jordan can. Uh, through the green hydrogen can shift more, but this is need to be connected with the other country. We should uh, think carefully what's uh, already happened. This is co uh, cost uh, a lot of money. And we always, I, I mentioned, we should be good learn from our uh, bad mistake uh, regarding uh, that uh, high cost. I am uh, individual wise, I am suffering because uh, the fluctuating price is started from uh, six pastor until 20, 28. And this is very high. And that's why uh, Jordanian people are encouraging 
to adopt uh, vo uh, to uh, rooftop uh, photovoltaic. Thank you again. Well, thank you. Uh, that, that's great. Well, but, but there's another way to see it, to be frank. So first of all, you know that in Europe uh, uh, from 2005 and 2011 or plus, you, we had this feed-in tariff regime and we fixed the price and everybody rushed. And you know that there was after that uh, uh, stop, uh, you know, many stopped in the regulation. There was even law which were, you know, implemented backward and then changed completely everything. And that, that was quite messy at that time. So first of all, everybody made a mistake uh, in the same way uh, around the world. And it's not, it's not Jordan, it's Europe, it's South Africa, it's everything. But, yes. but, there's another, but there's another way to see it also. It's every, the world should thank Jordan because how can you start a market and reach not a price where you have one, one cent? So for sure, the populations that started in this market have supported the growth. And, and we should thank everyone, actually, for doing that. Yes, and we sure. have supported the initial investment. So to be frank, there's another way to see it. So we're, we're thankful to Jordan for that. And, and that's, that's also, you know, I think, I think we can be proud of that also. But at the same time, so, so I understand that. Um, I understand the situation, but at the same time, what is past is the past, right? So, 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 so you do have these contracts and what about the new contracts? So I'm, 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 you know, I'm just wondering why uh, we, we would not go in a direction where, okay, now we can reach one cent, maybe two, you know, it's no longer about this thing, you know, it's about two, three. Uh, so I don't know about Jordan exactly how you can, you know, manage that in terms of size, in terms of uh, development risk and contract restructure and so on. But I would imagine that it, it could be possible to reach a price where today it's really competitive compared to the mix. And that's why, so, so Farah, what, what do you think about that? I understand that you are locked uh, in, in existing contract and that's it's, you know, sucking the, <laughs> the budget somehow. Uh, but 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 you do have also the other part which is still still functioning and which is also absorbing resources, and that part with with the new you know implementation could be somehow you know lifted a bit. So you know. Yeah yeah. Honestly, one of the ways that uh, I think the government already tried to do so and uh, succeeded in some of the projects is to renegotiate the prices that was agreed upon since. Uh, 2014 and 15, especially for the first round. Now we had uh, two and a half rounds. The first one was too expensive. The second one was moderate. And the third one, uh, some of the projects did not uh, go live uh, because of uh, some uh, technical limitations in the uh, connection areas. So my proposal, or uh, if I'm uh, in, the, in the shoes of the uh, Minister of Energy, I might uh, discuss the renegotiation with uh, the uh, companies, the providers of uh, electricity uh, through renewable energy resources and to extend their contracts in order to cover their losses if they have any losses. Because uh, the original contract was for 20 years. So I might uh, decide to go for 30 years or 25 years, but instead of going to, for example, 12, uh, uh, dollar cents for uh, kilowatt hour, we can go to five, for example. And uh, just to, I don't know if uh, any of my colleagues mentioned, uh, in Jordan, we still have until this moment, the most expensive electricity prices. The, uh, for example, the banking and the uh, telecommunication uh, uh, companies pays around or more than 40 dollar cents per kilowatt hour while the government already subsidized the uh, uh, industrial and agricultural uh, uh, facilities. But we still have the, one of the most expensive electricity in the world. And the, uh, maybe Mr. Mohammed can uh, correct me on that, but uh, the, the general expectations of uh, changing the electricity tariff, which will uh, be happening anytime soon, is to increase the prices, not to decrease the prices. I don't know if, if uh, Engineer Mohammed uh, corrects me if, in, in that regard. Yes. Uh, uh, allow me, uh, Mr. Chairman, to speak something. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no, <sir. laughs> 
yes. <laughs> first, first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Firas, and also just uh, one comment uh, to what you are already mentioned. Uh, I should uh, mention that I am uh, uh, just 35 years in photovoltaic in, in Jordan. That's me, and uh, uh, I am not that old, but I know everything about the details. Uh, when you are comparing uh, Jordan uh, with the uh, Europe countries, uh, I still remember uh, uh, G G8 when they bought uh, green uh, stimulus uh, incentives for population and for industry in that time. Uh, any uh, any uh, kilowatt uh, uh, kilowatt hour on that time was uh, uh, more than three times of uh, that you are uh, receiving from uh, the, the the domestic uh, use that's mean you can uh, sell at 50 cent despite you 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 you, uh, you can sell at 50 cent and that time it uh, may be 10 cent that you can buy the electricity and that that's the, the difference when uh, it's come to the right incentives in uh, in europe countries and in our country and comparing a country like jordan to uh, uh, Gulf country, Gulf country also inhabitants uh, uh, may be new just to pay money for electricity. Every country has uh, has its own situation and how to judge. Also, I told you that uh, energy demand is going down everywhere, uh, everywhere, fr and, and global wise. That means it's difficult for a Jordan. In, uh, it's in their uh, economy uh, situation and what's going around to just uh, look from one eye because I already mentioned one giga. One giga is more than enough for Jordan. Uh, also, as Dr. Firas said, I think some of them will be increased, but for normal, we ask, for example, at the first scale uh, to reach 400 uh, with low tariff, for example, for normal inhabitants. And really, uh, for all Jordanian, and we, we, this is not a top secret, the, the problem in my country, when, we, when you come to bring uh, do, 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 develop more, it's not uh, the problem that round number one, ra, ra, uh, round number two, uh, round number three, and this is a big difference in, in the cost. I will be more than, uh, than happy that a Jordanian com company from the private sector and also Jordanian banks are involved in this uh, 25 years contract. And this is depend on the situation of, of electricity. On, on the time that uh, the barrel of oil was $150, uh, we have no price of electricity. We just reach for uh, minimum to zero last year, we mentioned, or $20. Still, Jordanian people uh, have a difference in the, in the prices of, uh, of electricity. It's, uh, this, it is abnormal. And we should uh, support the normal people to their own life because uh, electricity is still a challenge in my country, not for normal people, for the private sector, for the industry sector. And we, if we can on that time, say if this round one, round two, or uh, uh, round one and round two, we can save this money for many many cities, many uh, hotels, many hospitals, uh, uh, many big projects for industry. And instead, we have like uh, direct, direct investment reached for one giga. I think uh, we be uh, we be uh, uh, a lot for renewable energy in Jordan. And this is direct from our uh, uh, our economy, and we say we we solve a problem in that time because, as uh, Dr. Firas mentioned, due to uh, gas interruption from Egypt, but we we cannot move so far because all of you are expertise on renewable energy or photovoltaic. We can take the big load from photovoltaic. And now when the, the, the last uh, problem happened in my country, Jordan, when turn, uh, turn off all or electricity in my country, one, one of expertise with that and renewable energy because uh, might, there is a bad fluctuating in, in electricity. We should take carefully every, uh, everything in details and micro and micro economy. Uh, otherwise, it, it should be a, a problem. Thank you again. Thanks. Uh, 
So I don't know if you want to to comment, Farah, or uh, I, I switch to 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 Hamad. I don't know. Uh, you want to add some comments, or? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, nothing to 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 add. Uh, uh, except for the, uh, the the government nowadays can renegotiate the old contracts with uh, all uh, bidders, all developers, uh, either if they used renewable or non-renewable. Uh, because as I know, the, the government was uh, negotiating the uh, uh, agreed upon prices with al Atarat company, which is responsible about the shale oil uh, production or shale oil burning to, pro to produce uh, electricity. And they failed to reach a good price, so uh, therefore they uh, went to the uh, court to solve it there. So that's my uh, yeah, humble opinion. Thank you. Mm. Well, yes, I, mean, uh, I agree with you 100 percent, Dr. Firas. Well, uh, well for, for, it's for Farah, my... by the way, yes, not, not, not Dr. Firas. <laughs> from my from my little experience, um, we see. I mean, many countries you, they they. Some countries they've tried to renegotiate uh, existing contracts. Okay, so basically, it's a, we have to think about a negotiation first of all. It's not about, as you mentioned, it's not about oh, well, I will save money, and you know, because these contracts they are locked, right? You have you have banks, you have lenders, you have investors, you have everything, and and we need to, you know, Jordan need to think about. The, the 2030 or 2050 or whatever, you know, and you know that if you, if you start, even even the, 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 the beginning of talking about that, you know, uh, then the market is in turmoil and they, they, they just, you know, everybody is scared. And, and, and that may prevent uh, Jordan from, you know, getting attractive, uh, new investments in the future, especially, you know, equity returns, because basically investors, they will say, oh, regulatory framework in Jordan, maybe yes, maybe not. And that has a price, that has a price, and same for the lenders. So usually when you start to, to in this direction, although I can understand that, um, you do have examples like uh, recently Ukraine, you know, and basically they had exactly the same thoughts that you, uh, which is lowering the tariff and increasing the length of the PPA, exactly the same. Uh, but you see, it's completely stuck now. The, 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 the market is very difficult to come back and very, very difficult. And whereas uh, Ukraine had a big, uh, big ambition, you know, that's why I'm not saying yes, no, whatever, just saying that these are. This, this, this should be treated really carefully. And in any case, it's a bargain. Like I give you that I, and, and, and you give me that, you know, somehow. And that, you know, it's something that uh, it's a discussion with the, with the sector and see if something positive can come out of that, you know. That's, that's I would say, you know, and it takes time to, to reach an agreement with the sector to do that. Uh, but some countries, they did that and some they did it wrong <laughs> and uh, in the wrong way. And then, the, you know, you just, losing years, like forget the next five years in renewable energy. And do you want that, you know? And you know, how much you gain in doing that, how much you will lose to do that, you know, that's, the, so all that should be really treated carefully. Um, uh, Ahmad, what do you think about this? Can you explain to us this, uh, this regulatory framework on the rooftops, the price and, and, and so on? How, how does it work? Do you know in detail the regulatory framework? Uh, hello, hi. Yes, uh, sorry. Can you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, about... the, reg the the regulatory framework. Uh, what, what 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 do you think about uh, this? Uh, can you explain to us the regulatory framework in Jordan on the rooftop? Um, honestly, because I'm I'm um, a little bit away from the EPC sectors. I believe maybe Farah or my, my the colleagues who's in the EPC sector may know more about the regulations. Uh, about the, I, I only from the supplier side, we only know like uh, headlines from our uh, partners such as uh, EPCs. Farah, can you please give more information? Yes, yes, about... yeah, 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 yes, of course. Uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, we have uh, two different types of regulations uh, regarding using the uh, photovoltaic or any source of renewable energy for the uh, facilities. Uh, the first one is the net metering. We don't have feed and tariff in Jordan not like uh, Germany or Spain. Uh, we have a net metering scheme that you can, uh, uh, you will build the EV projects 
on the rooftop uh, of the facility, and you can use the uh, produced electricity directly to feed in your uh, appliances. If you have any excess energy, it will go back to the grid and the smart meter will register this amount to your uh, credit. At the end of each month, you do the settlement. And if you have excess energy, it is going to uh, be credited into your next month uh, credit as of kilowatt hour, not money. We don't have any financial transactions in this regard. I'm only talking here about the uh, private sector relation with the uh, uh, electricity, uh, electric utilities. The second scheme is the wheeling scheme, where if you have, uh, for example, a hospital and you don't have enough space on your rooftop, you can buy or rent a piece of land that is far away from uh, your uh, location and you can build up the PV system at uh, that land. Then uh, the company of the electricity company will install the smart meter, which will uh, read the uh, monthly production from your wheeling uh, uh, plant and will deduct this amount from your uh, consumption at the hospital. Of course, using the wheeling scheme will have some losses because uh, you will lose some uh, of the electricity due to the um, uh, transmission. The transmission and, right? Yeah, the, uh, uh, also there are some uh, small fees about zero, zero, uh, six uh, JDs per kilowatt hour, which is nothing compared to the uh, uh, the uh, beneficial uh, of using this kind of system. Now, the other scheme is the uh, power purchase agreements, which uh, usually uh, or already uh, done uh, was done be between developers and uh, the government itself. Uh, this is the only way uh, through the uh, PPAs uh, to. Uh, uh, produce electricity and sell it directly to the government. But for the private sector, we don't have feed-in tariff. It's either net metering or uh, wheeling schemes. And, uh, and uh, at the current uh, EPC price and, and solar panel uh, prices, uh, okay. we reach a price which is below uh, the uh, electricity price set in Jordan or the can Okay, it... uh, let me, yeah, let me explain more about that. We, uh, we have, we don't have a fixed electricity tariff for all users, we have around 18 uh, different electricity tariffs in Jordan. For example, the residential scheme, they start with uh, the first 160 kilowatt hour. Uh, you will pay around, uh, if I, I want to convert uh, always into US dollars, uh, it's all, almost four uh, US uh, dollars uh, cents per kilowatt hour. But when you consume more, if you reach more than 1,000 kilowatt hour per month, the electricity tariff will be around 40 cents instead of four. That's 40, four zero cents instead of four cents per kilowatt hour for the residential. Now, uh, we have other sectors like the regular tariff, which covers the hospitals, the schools, the universities. Uh, we have uh, industrial, agricultural, uh, army, street lighting, and uh, so on and so forth. So if your uh, project lies uh, between one of the high tariffs like the regular hospitals, schools, universities, residential, uh, commercial buildings, uh, it will be very feasible. Sometimes it will be too good to be true. Some of the uh, 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 schools and universities in, in Jordan the payback period for those facilities reached one year, only one year to cover your capital investment. However, for other uh, segments like the residential and agricultural, it may, it may go more than uh, one year, of course. It, it may reach uh, three, four, five years, depends on the size of the system and the installation type. So this is also a brief about the tariffs and the regulations in Jordan. Well, uh, Farah, Farah and Mohamed, you are the great. Uh, we, we want to come to Jordan tomorrow. <laughs> you are very <laughs> uh, okay, uh, um, Dr. Fira, so what's your, what's your, which, which are the segments that uh, you, you, you like to develop? So schools, etc. Do you see also agriculture as a challenge? Where, where do you see 
uh, the, 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 the market and what kind of buildings also uh, do we, do, should we target? Uh, uh, I think the commercial market, the most highest pay for the, elect the, 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 the electricity, because as uh, Farah said, it reached up to 30, 40 cent per kilowatt hour. And this is, this is the main target, I think, because the payback period is very visible, very attractive for them. And it's maximum up to 2.5 years. So it is very attractive, very visible. For, for this, is, this is the most attractive market in the field for the coming years. And, uh, and what about the, uh, the industry in Jordan? I mean, do you uh, produce uh, solar panels? Do you have many installers? Uh, do, we, do you think that there will be more uh, solar, uh, you know, more factories? Or how do you see the, I would say, the integration of the industrial environment mm -hmm. in Jordan? No. no, nowadays we have two factories in Jordan. One of them is very old one, and it's since 10 years, more than 10 years. And the second one in Aqaba since four years. I think both of them are more than enough for the local market, and they are even depending mostly on exporting the, the material outside of the Jordan. So they are not even not so much in the in the local market. Local market are very much depending on the on importing the, the panels from outside. Not so very... yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, they are not selling so much in the local market. They are depending on the exporting the material. So more than two, uh, two factories is more than enough for the local market. Okay. The, so uh, Ahmad, when are you? So uh, Longi, what are you doing? There's a there's a factory to be installed there, but it's there's no no longer any space for you now to bring a factory there. So you just have to <laughs> export. That's it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have the chance to build the factory in Jordan. But uh, honestly speaking, we are now in a serious stages of uh, building a factory in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's still in the very early stages, but it is serious stage. Uh, so maybe uh, we can find a new uh, factory for Longi in, in Saudi Arabia, in the region. Okay, thanks. I think uh, Sangita, it's uh, it's it's finished, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, the time is up. Okay, so well, let's. Uh, I don't know if we if we do a wrap up. Uh, maybe maybe a few few words from from each of you, right? To to conclude, uh, Farah. Yeah, actually, I I just noticed that uh, there are some questions. So uh, in the questions and ah, yeah, I saw this, this one. So should we, yeah. should we do that quickly? Uh, well, there are some somewhere to which we went to answer, if I, if I understand. Uh, yeah, the, the first question uh, is to Ahmed. Uh, is there any planning to manufacture long, long G modules in Middle East region? I, I have just answered this question. Yes, that yes. we are planning yeah. to have yeah, yeah, I can answer the second one, which is the oldest installation of solar in Jordan and how many megawatts. Uh, actually, the the very first installations started only in 2012, and it was very uh, limited or very small scale uh, projects like uh, 10 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, that's it. Then after 2013, the market was uh, well educated and uh, it uh, enhanced uh, to, to reach. Nowadays, we have uh, uh, 2.1 gigawatts of live renewable energy projects, uh, either uh, photovoltaics and uh, wind uh, power plants. Okay, uh, then there's the question of, of storage. I mean, let's, let's, I mean, you know, we, we, we know that uh, it's, it's, it's already difficult for large scale project because you do have this issues on price and so on. So if you add storage, I would imagine that uh, the overall price would be, would be a bit high. But since you have a feeding, uh, not feeding tariff, but if you say that there are some segments where you have such returns, um, one year or two year payback, uh, then maybe storage is, is something which is considered in Jordan. Is that, is that what you see there? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, actually, we, we have one of the largest uh, projects in Jordan that was executed by the local manufacturer, Philadelphia Solar in Jordan. Uh, it's 10 megawatt uh, peak of power plant and 10 megawatt hour of uh, uh, storage capacity. The storage uh, helps the, uh, the NEPCO companies, the national companies and the local distributors of energy, which are three companies in, uh, in Jordan, to uh, shift the peak of the load. Uh, it's it's mainly about shifting the peak load demand of the uh, uh, electricity gen generated. It uh, needs another webinar to discuss more about the storage impact and the uh, benefit of uh, storage, but I think we are running out of time. Well, that's Sangeeta to organize that. Uh, we don't know. It depends on her. So, so let's see what she's going yeah, to say. Yeah, of course. Um, and about the last one is about you know grid integration challenges in the next uh, five years. I mean that that for me also is, I, I agree it's it's a good question. Um, uh, you know it's it's temporary. I understand that it costs a lot to improve the grid, but if you want to uh, increase the renewable energy in the mix, you do have this you know this highly decentralized system, one megawatt and so on. But at the point in time, you, you have also to think about how to integrate more large scale. And do you see that coming? I mean, is there a plan, a five-year plan to improve transmission and grids and so on to integrate more intermittency? Um, may I answer this question or anyone else wants to? Yeah. Uh, I have answer for this question. And I think the, the two big challenges in Jordan, again, is the infrastructure and the current contracts with the conventional uh, power stations. If we, sh if we will change every single turbine that going phase out with the conventional type with the renewable energy, that will help a lot to increase the percentage of the renewable energy and to prepare the infrastructure to be ready to receive the new renewable energy. That's, I think, this is, should be the plan or the strategic plan for the government for the next 20 years, 25 years, plus the storage. Storage will solve a lot of problems of electricity in Georgia. Thank you. Uh, that's, uh, that's also what you, what you believe, there is storage and grid infrastructure. Yeah, you see the, yeah, yeah if, if, if I consider the, now the, uh, the mix in Jordan and uh, producing electricity, it's not the uh, authority of the electricity distribution companies. It's the authority of the national companies. Uh, it's already uh, built up what we call the green corridor. The green, the green corridor is a very high infrastructure that was built and it connects the south uh, governorates in, in Jordan to the north governorates because we have a concentrated production facilities and capacities concentrated in the southern of Jordan, while we don't have mostly uh, not that much of industrial or consumption in the southern area. The consumption is focused on middle and northern of, uh, of Jordan. So the uh, national company already made uh, that uh, project, but I don't believe that this is the right time for the government, especially after the consequence of COVID 19 to invest in uh, uh, upgrading the uh, the electricity generation or the uh, network or the infrastructure uh, nowadays unfortunately but i hope in the future they will have uh, uh, plans to uh, to do so well it's very very interesting um uh, in may i have one comment please uh, because the current infrastructure for the green corridor is covering only from south part of Jordan up to Amman, to the capital. And it is not covering from Amman to the north part of the, of, or from the east part to the north part. So the second green corridor will be from the east part to the north part. And still we need for the third one from Amman, from the capital to the north part, just to connect all, the whole country together. So the current one, it's covering only uh, south to, to Amman only. Okay, I think uh, I think that that's it. Uh, so thank you very much, and Sangita, uh, this is this is yours, and thank you everyone. It was very uh, really a pleasure to be your host today and moderator.
So I really enjoyed yeah. the discussion. It's very great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, to all the esteemed panelists, for such an insightful session and sparing your precious time and extending your support for this event. A uh, special thanks to Kareem sir for moderating the session. So with this positive note, we are ending today's event and promise you to come back soon with more knowledge-driven events. Till then, it's bye from our end. Please do take care of yourself and be safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.